Hi, this is Bobby with Grub Mud Concrete. We're working out in Avon, Indiana. Today we're we going to be tearing out this three foot sidewalk and we're also going to be doing a driveway extension, a little triangle place for more parking. First thing I always do is I put my sign up because there's always going to be people stopping you and wanting a business card or wanting an estimate and that way they at least can get your number if you're not there. As you can see, I unloaded the trailer and I got everything set up nice and neat and put a little ramp up because we're going to have to tear it out with the jackhammer and put it in the wheelbarrow and wheel it up there. And it's not easy. It was a beautiful morning out. It was the first job of the year. And here's Justin. This is his first time ever on a jackhammer. So he didn't really know how to do it, but I showed him how and he caught on real quick. We like to use a, a pick and get up underneath a bit. Um, then we put it in the wheelbarrow and then we we just haul it and go up the ramp There you go. There you see he's getting the hang of it There I am wheeling it up we use that ramp all the time um, If you're doing concrete, you're gonna want to get a dump trailer at least if not a little dump truck um, But yeah, he starts flying on this stuff and uh, now he's my jackhammer guy. This was that his actual first day on the job. He's got all that torn out real fast. I couldn't even keep up with them, but there we got it all picked up and um, ready to be hauled off. What we do is we stockpile it at our house, and then we we take a bunch to dump on rainy days and whatnot. Um, here's my dad. He got here. He's my business partner, and um, he's he's using the Kubota. We love this. We're one of the very few concrete companies that use a Kubota, but we always run into roots here in Indiana, and, and that thing just bites right through them. Um, it's, it was really bad here, but here we brought an axe with us, and I was trying to use a shovel, and there, that's what happened to the shovel. <laughs> but the tractor, it, it can go through it pretty much no problem, especially if you cut one of the ends off with the Sawzall. I always paint a line. And then um, I try to get my dad to dig on the other side of the line, but for some reason he always makes it to where I got to use a shovel. But hey, at least I'm only doing two or three inches with the shovel. It's kind of like a, a big bucket with teeth on it, but um, we like having a flat bucket too because it's good for digging, as you can see right here. But yeah, we did. We unloaded the concrete and then we brought the trailer back, and now we're putting the dirt in it. And we're lucky we got a, a nice area where we can dump stuff and the neighbors don't really care. But there you see it's all tore out and there's my outside form. I always set that up first. And I'll take a look at it from back there to see what it looks like as far as height. Then make sure it's straight. And there's some more roots. That's what caused it to heave in the first place. But... Like I said, that tractor pretty much has no problem. And once he gets that out, then I can set the inside form. You need to set it just a little bit higher than the outside form so the water falls away from the house. And we have this dug out to six inches. And then we form it up. There I am putting the form in. I like to use screws, especially for these toenails and stuff. It just, they hold a lot better and you're not pounding, but I guess it's just whatever you prefer. I used to use nails and I just prefer screws now. I do like that big sledge though. And these metal stakes, they're really nice. One bad thing about screws is you have to dig out behind sometimes just to get your drill down in there, but it's no big deal. I like it holding as tight as they I always screw it a little high and then I tap it down to the height. There you go. Now it's ready for stone. So the stone, uh, we stockpile it at our house too, and then uh, we bring it in in the dump trailer and we'll burrow it up there. And you need to grade it out to about three inches because you gotta compact it. And um, the stone we use is a 53s. It's called 53s. It's got the dust in it, so you can really compact it. You can, if you take, try to zoom in on it, so you can see some of the dust in it. It's a, uh, it's really, it packs in really well. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you can back right in and dump right out of your trailer. And we get, we do that a lot. And then spread it around with a shovel and a rake. 
I always use a rake on this stuff. Um, you can use a come along too, though. Uh, the good thing about a come along is when you grade it, come along is exactly four inches. So if it's sitting like that, that's perfect. And then you're ready. But you, one thing you want to always do is compact it. Um, this isn't a big compactor, but it, it does a really good job. Um, but you always want to compact it because you want to make the the ground settle as much as it's as much as it can before you put the concrete on it. Um, a lot of times we'll spray water on it too and compact it again. Um, it's very very important because of the freeze stall and everything that you get it as compact as possible. All right, this is the morning of the pour. You always want to get there before the truck. It's about 8 a.m. There's a one and a half yard sidewalk one and a half yard driveway extension, maybe two, one yard little driveway repair. And I had a couple chips, so we put the bonding cement, bonding agent there. And over here, we had a two yard pour and a little little piece uh, at, uh, that the customer had us cut the fix over there to the right. But all these jobs I got because the people saw us working out there and they asked for estimates and you can bid them a little lower if you want if you already have work in the neighborhood um especially since you yeah you know, most of these concrete companies you have to pay a minimum uh delivery charge or buy four yards from them it just makes it kind of nice here we go waiting on concrete and it's just now pulling up you always want to make sure you got enough help and experience to help Today we're going to have um, Justin Wilmer on laboring, um, Anthony another finisher, me a uh, master finisher, and my dad, he's, he's pretty much a finisher. He drove a mixer truck just like that for 35 years. That's kind of how I got into the concrete business. That right there, I'd say that's about a five slump. You, you want to get it to about a six slump. We use six bag in this cold weather. Four, it's about 4,500 PSI, um, straight cement, no fly ash. There's Justin. He's Wilbur on. He's a really good worker. I was kind of surprised. I'm really glad we hired him. I'm going to teach him to be a really good finisher. And we got it all struck off and maybe floated one time real quick. And they're putting the last Wilbur on in. And Anthony hung back and floated it off. Got it nice, nice, and got it edged, and I got this one. I take took care of this one. I got it both floated and edged, combo edged on the outside, and joined in. My dad, he took care of this one and the, the little two-yard pour across the street, and then Justin kind of came back, and I wanted to get him some experience, so I let him kind of finish this one all by himself, and he did pretty It's ready to put the finish on. We do a broom finish here in Indiana, especially on driveways. You don't want a real light broom finish, but you, you do want to have some texture to it. <clears throat> but you don't want it too rough right there. That's about perfect. And you see that joint that we put in it because it's going to break. And you want it to crack right in the joints that you make. You want to clean off your broom every time. And uh, we like this big wheelbarrow. Just dip it in it. Knock the water off. Give it to the other guy. If it starts getting hard on you, you can push and then pull it. But if you time it right, you can just pull it right across one time. With just a little bit of water on your broom. And it, it does a perfect job. The customer is really happy with this. And just line it up. You're going to put a 4-inch edge around it anyway. So you don't have to get really super duper close to the edge. But it, it's it's nice because sometimes you, you're not going to go back and put that 4-inch edge. So uh, it's kind of just up to the customer. I always go over that with the customer beforehand. I always try to let my dad do the easier jobs Berman's pretty easy. It's just, it is a, it's very important though. You got to pull it straight. 
and Anthony. He's a 12-year finisher. He He's shining what we call shining the edges or putting the pattern back. Definitely don't want to don't want to let it get too hard before you do this little four inch pattern on the outside some people call it picture framing just gives it a nice clean appearance and this is the one I did I put the combo edge on this one just to match everything else and I actually shine the joints this one just and finished it looks pretty good he just has to clean up the mud that got a, got a, got on the driveway and this one, Anthony finished right here. He did a pretty good job. I cut the joints for him. There's that one. That's done. That's backfilled and everything. Forms pulled same day. Pretty good. Here's Anthony and my dad backfilling this one with soil. We always tell the customer, you're not going to have to do any work except for possibly plant some seed. And, uh, you know, customers like that. So we always try to backfill everything with good, good soil. This was Anthony's first day back, so he was kind of, he's gained about 50 pounds. <laughs> he's a good worker, though. He's fun to work with. It's always good to have a good crew. So there you go. You can chop it up with the shovel if you want, but you don't have to. As long as you get it looking something like that, the customer will be happy. There it is. Grub mud concrete. That's the finished product. If we could keep the squirrels off, it would be all right. And we appreciate you watching. Hopefully it helped.